What's going on, everyone? This is specifically for the liberals, some conservative. And I'm going to tag you, Miss Candace Owen, Officer Tatum, the big networks, so you can understand what we're dealing with, with this whole Palestine Israel issue, so that you will understand more that this is more of a religious war, and this has been going on since the time of Muhammad's inception and his hatred against the Jewish people. We see here in the source called the Hadith. It's the second book next to the Quran uh, for mostly the Sunni Muslims, and of course, I think some of the Shia Muslims, because, yeah, because, you know, they are dealing with them. Because no matter what, at the end of the day, the Jews is their number one enemy. Sometimes just for no reason, out of jealousy and hatred. So, in Sahih Muslim, the book of tribulation, last hour. This is something that they, they need to fulfill. Which is the opposite from Muslims. They think they're waiting for the Messiah. But for us in the Bible... That is really the Antichrist that the Muslims are trying to usher in. In Sahih Muslim, book number 2922, the companion Abu Huraira reported Muhammad as saying, The last hour would not come unless the Muslims will fight against the Jews and the Muslims would unalive them. You see that word? It's a command. It's a demand. No questions, no and ifs or but. Until the Jews would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree. And the stone or a tree would say, Muslims or the servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and unalive him. But the tree, Garkad, would not say, for it is the tree of the Jews. Now this was just a little, make some stories you'll find, see some big belief fairy tale. But you find a couple of verses to the point of their hatred and racism. That to the point they say a rock will call out and say, hey, there's a Jew there, go get him. So you see where this historical context, where you align it from what the book says to their behavior. Uh, and what many of the Islamic nations, when they conquer lands, push the Jews away. Sahih Muslim 2921. Similarity, Ibn Umar reported Muhammad as saying, you will fight against the Jews. You will. You're going to do it. I don't want to hear an excuse. That's a different interpretation. God designed it. We understand it. Multiple people that has a, a open-mindedness will understand what it's saying. You will fight the Jews. You will fight against the Jews and you will unalive them. Until even a stone would say, come here, Muslims, there is a Jew hiding behind myself. When I talked about the other day, they like to use the Bible verse about the Old Testament passages. There's a difference when God brings judgment, but you see a difference right here when it's out of hatred, out of your own desire, because of what you want. What else we got? Another one, and some of you will see, is a repeat. Sahih Bukhari 2926, narrated by Abu Huraira. Muhammad said the hour will not be established until you fight the Jews and the stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, O Muslim, there is a Jew hiding behind me, so unalive him. Another one even harsher, Jamia Tirmidhi 2236, Ibn Umar narrated that Muhammad said, you shall fight the Jews, you will gain such control over them. That a rock will say, O oh Muslim, this Jew is behind me, so unalive him. Sahih al Bukhari, number 3593, narrated by Abdullah bin Umar. I heard Muhammad saying, The Jews will fight with you, and you will be given victory over them, so that a stone will say, O oh Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, unalive him. The Jews will fight with you. I wonder why. See, when it comes to defense mechanism, we multiple passages, he was ordered to go fight them, unalive them. But does it give specific reason why? What is the cause and effect? Did he even try to preach to them? None of that. 
It's just his hatred because the Jews noticed that he was a false prophet. So you all might hear Moses will say the passages. Oh, look. One of the Quran passages. Uh, you, 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 what did he say? Um, you follow your religion. I follow mine. That's only when they're in the minority. But when they have the upper hand, don't even think about it. Don't even ask for peace. Plunder them, force them to convert, or unalive them. This is kind of messing up their little prophecy. Sahih Muslim 2921, Abdullah B. Umar reported that Muhammad said, The Jews will fight against you, and you will gain victory over them until the stone would say, Muslim, here is a Jew behind me, unalive him. I can't fathom enough where there's nothing preaching going on. They want to fight them? No, they got to fight against you. The whole world is against Islam. Muhammad implemented laws after they initially, offensively, start forcing their views, their religion on other nations. This is why I find it hard to believe. This is the element that many liberals are missing. Unless they're part of the problem, they're part of the one world system. Perhaps these big leaders, maybe where's the Antichrist is here. They, they, they're playing the game. A lot of these Freemasons have some little mixture um, aligned with some Islamist thought. You know, to be, of course, we know Masons, all you got to do is just believe in a God. And you're part of the clique. I wonder if that's part of the ways of having a one world system. But that is another problem that, that I see. Nothing it says what is the cause and effect of the war except that nobody believed in his prophecy. He got jealous after he initiated the killing. And of course, just like any other group, you would defend yourself like what Jews did during October 7. And you think that's normal? How about another one? Now we have somebody trying to accuse the Jews that they killed one of their companions. And it doesn't explain why, what the straight out of it. All the Jews' response was, we did not even unalive him. Sahih al-Bukhari 7192, narrated by Abu Layla bin Abdullah bin Abdurrahman bin Sal. Sal bin Abi Hatma and some great men of his tribe said, Abdullah bin Sal and Muhay Muhaisa went out to Kaibar as they were struck with poverty and difficult living conditions. Then Muhaisa was informed that Abdullah had been unalive and thrown in a pit or a spring. Muhaisa went to the Jews and said, By Allah, you have unalived my companion. The Jews said, uh, By Allah, we have not killed him. So already start instigating, kind of like a typical Arab Islamist, always being hot headed, want to start accusing things, kind of like what's going on right now in these stupid protests. Muhaisa then came back to the people and told them the story. He, his elder brother Huaisa and Abdurrahman bin Sal came to Muhammad and he who had been at Kaibar proceeded to speak. But the prophet said to Muhaisa, the eldest, the eldest meaning let the eldest of you speak. So Huaisa spoke first and then Muhaisa. Muhammad said, the Jews should either pay the blood money of your deceased companion or be ready for war. Like, what's going on here? They already said no. They should pay the blood money. They're not even getting their stories straight. Kind of like what you see right now, what these people do using the liberal media so they can play the victim and add more hatred towards the Jews. That they had uh, Jews in that respect, and they wrote that they had not killed them. Then Muhammad said to Huaisa, Muhaisa, and Abdurrahman, can you take an oath by which you will be entitled to take the blood money? They said, no. He said to them, shall we ask the Jews to take an oath before you? They replied, but the Jews are not Muslims. So Muhammad gave them 100 she camels as blood money for himself. Saul added, when these she camels were made to enter the house, one of them kicked me with its leg. Uh, don't know what that means, but look like Muhammad already doing shady things. Um, they didn't care. Oh, they were Jews. 
already give the what sold 100 sheep camels as a blood money so they can start this campaign and there's a story in there about Kai Bar did the most hideous crime similar what you see what happened on October 7th let me find that story so this is where they came to the area of Kai Bar probably at the time of Saudi and tell me if this is similarity like in in October 7th Sahih Bukhari 3647 narrated by Anas bin Malik Muhammad reached Kaibar in the early morning and the people of Kaibar came out with their spades and when they saw the Prophet they said Muhammad and his army and returned hurriedly to take refuge in the fort the Prophet raised his hand and said Allah is greater Kaibar is ruined if we approach a nation then miserable is the morning of those who are warned In Sahih Bukhara under the military expeditions, number 4200, narrated by Anas, Muhammad offered the Fajr prayer near Kaibar when it was when it was still dark and then said, Allahu Akbar, Kaibar is destroyed. For whatever we approach a hostile nation to fight, then evil will be the morning for those who have been warned. Then the inhabitants of Kaibar came out running on the roads. Muhammad had their warriors killed, their offspring, and women taken as captive. Safiya was among the captives. She first came in the, same, in the share of Daya al Khali, but later on she belonged to the Prophet. The Prophet made her manumission as her mar. Pretty much forced her to marry her sex slave whatever it may be killed off their whole family and village that's exactly what they did in october 7. everything to him is an enemy when it doesn't go his way other passages in there says some of it they kept alive so they can work in their land but he forced them to what they what they grow to give it to muhammad and their companions this dude was just going around butchering people that doesn't go their way. These people were running. And because of all his false prophecy claim, even the same girl, Sophia, that he captured, fed her, fed him a poison, which later on, Muhammad died from that poison. And even their own false book says that Allah will cut off his aorta if he did something against him. And this is another issue for many of the Muslims. It's a, it's a embarrassment that Muhammad died by the hand of the Jewish woman whom she lost her family it, just the story of law it just disgusts me so you everyone wants to play the blame game that the Jews are the bad guy look at the historicity look how the Middle East viewed them and it's not, not just the Jews only the Jews are the number one out of all the non-Muslims that they hate because there are stories that the preachers talk about that if they want to get a quicker way to go to heaven, all they got to do is honor life a Jew and there's your one-way ticket to heaven. I'm sure many of you guys saw the dark web. You saw the way how they're screaming, Dad, look, look how many Jews I am alive. Alhamdulillah. Definitely going to go, go to Jannah right away. Get your little 72 verge, if you know what I mean. But too bad they ain't going to get it. So this is what I want to share. And this is just a few of them that, I, that I've shown. And if that's not good enough, I'll share some more of it. I just want you guys, the liberal media, to those that don't practice the faith and you're getting bombarded by their lies, you have to add that element understand their mindset where they're coming from to say that they're apartheid they're oh they're the killers they're the one that want to bring peace this is just their disgust of no reason at all you don't see nothing muhammad preach about for the jews or trying to bring any sort of salvation message except for the fact that he got called out for being a false prophet so this is where you went from religion of peace to the other passages of the quran if you're a Jew, Christian, Sabian, 
don't worry, you'll go to heaven as long as you believe there's a God. To know he went from there to going from, if you see a Jew and they try to greet you, he will say, don't greet them, but make sure they greet you. Then you push them over the side. Call them not just, not just the Arabic word for calling them dirty. I hope you could see this Candace Owen, Officer Tatum, any other big conservative network or even the liberal network. Both sides need to know who you're dealing with. You may not be a religious person, but guess what? It will affect your life if you fall for the lies. Their ideology also teaches they can lie against non-Muslims because they think we're all dirty. Yes, even you that may not believe in God. You're just a nobody. I can lie to you to get what I want. So there you have it, folks. Like it, share it, share it as far as possible. Share it to your liberal friends. Show them these passages. That way they can at least get an awareness and understand what they're dealing with. And you can see the bigger picture behind the war. Palestine is just a front. Their bigger goal is get the Jews and the Christians, then the polytheists, atheists. So for you atheists and all you guys for queers for Palestine or whatever, you're just being used by them. Now, I'll say this one thing before I go. Do I think that every single Muslim that, are, that is a human being is all bad people? No. I was there on that side too. But if they have an open mind and educate themselves and see where the source comes from, they will see where all this hatred has built up from. So, there you have it. I'll continue sharing some more, bring some more articles, bring the balance. That way you can see the bigger picture behind all this. I'll talk to you soon. Take care and God bless.